Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the Adobe Live show, still live from Adobe Max in LA. And uh, what do we say? The, the best is for the end, or oh, I like what that. What is the expression? <laughs> yeah. We will welcome. Least, Lara. but last but not least, maybe. The least, yeah. What is the expression, Paco? Uh, yeah. No, so it's not the expression I'm looking for. In <laughs> French, probably... in French, oh. it's the meilleur pour la fin. It's the best for the end. Yeah, we have that too in German. Ah. Das Beste kommt zuletzt. Okay, so let's do it in French and German. I think you will get it. <laughs> so I'm super pleased to welcome Laura. We were live together, uh, when was it, like two years ago? Or? It was a while yeah. ago. Right? I think mm. it was two years ago. Yeah. In San Diego. Yeah. Yeah. And you were here as an influencer and now you're back as an Adobe Creative Residence, yeah. which is exciting. A lot um, changed. So we will, she's a photographer, we will discover her work. We will explain also what is the Creative Residency mm -hmm. Program, if you don't know what this is. And uh, we will play a little bit with Lightroom CC. If you want to uh, enhance your pictures, then uh, you can share your creative process. Yeah. We are live together for 55 minutes. We will give away some uh, custom stickers, uh, thanks to our partner Sticker Mule during the show. Cool. So stay tuned. It will be the chat and win segment. Cool. Uh, it can happen at any time. <laughs> so we, who do we have in the chat? So Laura, you're from Germany. Yeah. Uh, I'm now living in San Francisco. Where are you all from? I see a carry. Save the best for last. Ah, oh, thank you. Oh, lo you mejor like... para lo último. Okay, I have no idea. That sounds like it's... We'll do all the languages for the... Tambien. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you, da Daniel. Thank you, Carrie. And uh, Don and Everst. Uh, Give us more also. languages. Sark, yeah. Thanks for... Uh, save the best for last. Okay. I think now we will master this expression. <laughs> and it will make sense when you will see her work. And Thank uh, yeah. you. Hi, everyone. And Deb from California. Ah, we're neighbors. San Diego, Not Las too Vegas. Far. San Diego, even more south, and Las Vegas. OK, awesome. Um, yeah, so I will uh, maybe switch your screen, and you can introduce yourself, mm -hmm. your work, so we discover your uh, universe. Yeah, so I'm a conceptual self-portrait photographer, I think. OK. <laughs> That's what I normally say and then I'm always like it's not as bad as it sounds um, uh, I feel like selfie generation really if you say you're a self portrait photographer people are like mm. like they're automatically like oh didn't you couldn't you come up with something else but I guess it's a bit different um, I normally try and have my self portraits not be like on the first glance visible that it's a self portrait it's not really about the fact that you recognize Laura in the images yeah. It's way it's more about the picture that you create. Yeah, the it's about the process also. It's just a lot of fun, and it gives you an incredible amount of freedom that you don't have if you have to set an appointment with people and um, be like, next Friday at five we're doing oh, this. Yeah. And if I just do that on my own, and I could be like Saturday morning at four a.m., I'm gonna be like, I don't know, outside some. It looks like nice fog is gonna happen in an hour, and then I'm just gonna leave. Okay. And um, it's just also it's a lot of fun to take self portraits, and you can express things very differently, a lot more direct than telling someone else what you want to have expressed in your work. And where are you based in Germany? Uh, I'm in the very south, like between Stuttgart and Munich. I just moved okay. back to a little silent place, like cope, like having like a contrast to all the traveling and all the like yeah. being at exciting things like this. It's so nice to come back to a more silent place. <laughs> and so you're close to nature, so you, Definitely. you can go in the forest or like a beautiful yeah. landscapes in this region. Yeah, so and I guess you can tell like, yeah. that I'm always like looking for, I don't know, like wow. situations. Yeah. It's definitely nature. I'm trying to like make it more like minimalistic maybe. Um, so in this case, like, are you by yourself to take the picture? Or you here I had a friend who helped, like uh, uh, in the other one, I had, yeah, here I had a friend who helped me. Max, he's awesome. Um, because I Adobe didn't bring Max. a tripe. Adobe Max is named after Max. <laughs> yeah, he's only yeah. here. He's also here, but he's only here because it's called Max, right? Yeah. And that's also why I made it up that he's Max. <laughs> um, yeah, like that was this was really an exception to the rule because I just like if I have someone who helps me, then I'm just holding up my camera and I'm like, okay, this is the frame. Please make sure you get that little corner in the photo and you get this little yeah. corner in the photo. <laughs> and I'm gonna be here. And this is the settings. Just click and then I'll just do different poses. It's basically like. I mean, it's yeah. not like it's like having someone who plays your tripod for a little bit, and then yeah, normally exactly. I just have, have a tripod. A Martin saying, "Oh, this takes selfies to another dimension." Yeah, that's what I hope that's people uh, see, like that it is a big difference. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, thank you. So I guess you can oh, see I just like to explore the areas I'm in, and here I had help to get the, at the tree <laughs> that high because honestly, it's not that easy. No, oh, 
seriously, there's a really funny video of me hanging in the tree. And then I was like, okay, I can't hold myself anymore, but I, I, of course you can't just like go. And you also just, then it like, if you like slowly go down oh, the tree, yeah, that doesn't feel good. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh, get me back down. <laughs> that was very funny. But I don't know, just exploring. And I guess in this picture you can tell, I don't really care if this is me or not right now yeah. in the end visual. It's just fun to do it on your own and have that process and expressing it on your own. Um, but it could naturally also be someone else. And it just wouldn't mean the same to me, I guess. And maybe also something in the picture feeling wise would be different. Of course, I also have photos. This is like so much of a real self portrait where it's actually like, yeah, just of course in this, it is about me being me yeah. because it's recognizable. It's about my story. It's about what happened. And it's about like embracing that moment of change, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and here clearly I couldn't do this with another person because then it would be someone else and someone else's story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and most of the things are really in nature. Almost nothing is, sometimes I be, I'm in cityscapes, but oh, this okay. is just because yeah, this kind of like looks nature. nature is yeah. right? It doesn't really look like city. Yeah. But I just like to explore Where is this areas. One? This is in Rome. It's yeah. a Fontana di Trevi. Mm -hmm. Where you that was by probably really embarrassing how I said that. Where you throw tones. Yeah. This one. And it's really like, it's really hard to like be alone at the yeah, at that yeah. fountain. How because you like. Like, I mean, we were really early in the morning. Oh, okay. This was like the first sun that touched it. And um, there was a team actually, because this was for, for uh, oh. TV series. Ah, okay. And they so were they, talking they, they to they the police. People. Like, I mean, they, they had some people being like, go, please, away, please go away. But they also had to talk to the police who was guarding it, the, who are guarding oh. the whole thing. And they were like, she's just gonna sit there for a minute. <laughs> I was like, la, la, la. <laughs> no, this, I don't know. And sometimes you have to, just make things work if you really want that picture. And I guess, what else can I show? Things like that. It's also like, to me it's important, it's a self-portrait, but... Um, I mean, explaining someone that pose would take a while. That you want it yeah. to be exactly like that. And just doing it on your own is so much easier. And also, I don't know, has like a magic to me. And I guess it doesn't really matter if it's me or not, right? The head isn't even there. People who know me very well would recognize me, but hmm. probably not a lot of people. And it's not um, Photoshop? Yeah, it's not. Like there is a little bit of Photoshop, but um, I, my head was under the sand and I was wearing a snorkel. I, the, the bummer is I have a behind the scenes photo of this and it's very funny, but I don't have it with me. It was like a stupid thing to say, but <laughs> yeah, like I had a t-shirt wrapped around my hair. Okay. So like it looked like yeah. a funny turban. And then I had like really actually goggles. <laughs> on my on my eyes and the snorkel in my mouth and then I was like the snorkel was like somewhere here um, and like really sand all over me and then uh, communicating with the people around it like yeah I'm fine <laughs> through that snorkel are you alive yeah. yeah exactly but the thing is like it's actually weirdly like scary to be having your head covered oh, yeah, in sand yeah, yeah. even though you know it's like it's this big uh, like yeah, this not very thick but yeah still, that's it's still weird and the people at the beach were like, what is she doing there? Um, what else? And yes, Jim, we will uh, show also some light Lightroom magic. Oh yeah, yeah, we will. In minutes. I mean, I also just, I think my thing is like exploring somewhere and <laughs> finding things yes. that interest me. I'm, I'm almost never really planning a whole concept and I'm going somewhere. Here, I just, like, I met that guy a few hours before because we were exploring the same, the city in a team. And then I saw those two lights, um, like, uh, squares yeah. there. And I thought, what if I lay him in there? And only later, I thought, it looks, it looks funny because you don't know if he's wearing pants or not. But it could, it's exactly where the pants would be, that shadow. <laughs> he's actually wearing pants, but I think it yeah. kind of looks like it could only be the shadow. Yeah. Things like that are, like, peculiar things I think interest me or and like this one this is in Hawaii this is like rarely I do also shoot for brands and here I was wearing like shooting for a fashion brand oh, okay. and um, I still always try and like keep my style and keep my way of thinking and do something that's a little peculiar I mean in this case also it's a dress that's very peculiar so yeah. that helped but also finding something that you see through those holes maybe and having that atmosphere that fits my style things like that yeah and the light is very cool mm. and then like just i mean it's a it's a children's playground right and i'm just always <laughs> thinking because people are like um i can't shoot pictures like this because i don't have awesome locations but this is a children's playground like yeah there's that. no excuses to not create something and this is like from a bridge down just onto normal like 
a, a path. <laughs> but then, of course, sometimes it is... With an old camera. Yeah. That's one that I also use. Wait, where is the photo that I wanted to show? Because sometimes it is all about the location. Here, for example, you need an awesome location. Otherwise, yeah. it wouldn't be that great. But then you just have to look around and find something that you think is interesting like that. It's almost like a mouse and things like that. And then incorporate a human being with that. Mm -hmm. I think that's really my thing that I like to do. And before like turning as a photographer, like were, were you, uh, I don't know, like uh, studying dance or something or like, mm -mm. Uh, where the body was involved or like you involved your body in all these positions like through True, photography? Yeah. The thing is, I never really realized it and, 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 until people say that. I was studying architecture and I was doing, okay. when I was younger, I think from like 5 to 13, I was doing gymnastics. So I was really like, yeah. you the, know how it, to I think the body, the, body. the body tension is mm -hmm. something that you really learn with that. But I sadly never learned dance, but I'm really interested in dance. So I always like try and watch something like Pina, like Pina Bausch, yeah. the dance theater, and try and think about how I want to express what I want to express in a pose and do things like that. And then find locations that kind of fit the mood. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is great work. And then, like, I don't know, I think things like that. I was drinking a smoothie. <laughs> With the seeds? And, yeah, and then the, sm the, sm the, like, the uh, kiwi seeds were like yeah. running down the glass and I was like, it looks like the that. glass is crying and I was like maybe I could put that on my face and pretend it's tears and then the whole like um, message of the picture could be something funny because it's seats and not actually tears but it could also be something sad. I like to play with things like that. You just tell me when we need to build a light room and show something Now there. maybe you can uh, share your transition and the project you're working on for the oh, creative yeah, residency. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, so should I first say something about the residency, yep. what it is? That would be great. So the Adobe Residency is like um, a project that supports young artists um, for a year actually. Um, and Adobe picks out of like thousands of people who apply, they pick, this year was seven people, next year I think it will be eight actually, um, who get the chance to work on a project um, for a year without focusing on how to make money on the side and I don't know, do all the things around it. Um, you really apply with a project. You're not just saying, hi, I'm Laura and this is my portfolio, but you really have to have a project in mind and it has to be a passion project. I think that's really a key thing why I got picked. Mm -hmm. What I, I will tell about it like in a minute. Um, but you really get funded for a year, you get mentors, which is something that's like, you maybe don't think about, it's a crucial thing to have oh, mentors yeah. who like look back at your work like on a regular basis and you go to all crazy cool events like we were, we're at 99U and we were at off in Barcelona and now we're here like and you get introduced to a lot of people so it's really like an, an all-around support system that you get and you get to do that project that you always wanted to do it's pretty crazy I'm still whenever I talk about it I'm like Mm. And Did I'm really one of those seven people? How did that happen? <laughs> it's, it's pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. We receive a lot of applications. Yeah, and right? So, and yeah. I mean, that makes total sense. It's like, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity where you're like a free artist, but you get paid for that. It just normally doesn't happen. And so what I, apply, what I applied with was, um, do I have that here? Okay, the tr like the transition step in between, I don't have it here, but I was for years doing a project um, on the streets of the cities I was visiting or living in. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe I can actually, uh, I don't know if the internet will do that, but let's see. Oh yeah, I was just um, taking photos of people. This is all at one gallery thing, but you can tell here on the streets. No, anywhere. Like I was just asking people if I can take their photograph if they looked interesting to me. Okay. And um, I was doing that for years and after a while I noticed that the more, like the older the people were who I was asking, <laughs> the more likely they said, I'm not beautiful anymore, I don't, I think I shouldn't be in a photo. <laughs> and I was like, wait, 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 what? It's not like beauty is supposed to be something that's only for smooth skin, which is 20 years old. There's so much like interestingness in old age beauty. And also had the best conversations with the old people. And then I said, hey, Adobe, I want to do a project called The Beauty of Age for one year. I want to interview and photograph people who are over 80 years old. Wow. And honestly, I was like, they're probably not going to pick me because it's not a young and hip and fresh and sexy project. And I was like, yeah, probably my chances are not pretty high. But <laughs> I pitched a really like, I think they saw my passion in it. Yeah. And I think they, I don't know, thought it's relevant, right? Mm -hmm. Because our society is getting, is getting older yeah, and um, we all want to get old. We all 
um, will hopefully get old, yeah, but we're also scared of, of it. And the power of pictures everywhere and, and, yeah. and they are not represented. Like exactly. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of missing out on so much that is like a treasure in old people. They have so many stories to tell, so much life wisdom and so much knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we could learn a lot if we were to start talking with them. And then I pitched that and they said yes. And I was like, I, I wasn't <laughs> saying seriously. I was like, seriously? Cool. This is awesome. <laughs> So since May, I'm in that project, uh, in that residency program and doing my project. And um, I can show some of the things that came out of it. Yes, like, so online, you can already see like on that Instagram that I created for that project, it's called Beauty of Age. Okay. You can see some of the, like, it's kind of sneak peeks, I'd say. Okay. You can see like some details um, from the people who I met. It's always a quote of the people, what they, like something they told me and their age and their name. And, um, I think it's worth clicking on and reading through the quotes because we don't have the time right now, but it's insane what kind of stories they told me, like super happy, funny stories, crazy, 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 sad things that happened to them. Um, and in general, it's still amazing how you can learn from them that they are still sitting in front of you yeah. after crazy things that happen and they're satisfied mm -hmm. and happy with their life. And you're like, wow, that means even with all the bad things that are happening in my life, it doesn't mean in the end you're gonna be sad or, mm. or like frustrated Zerable. or something like yeah. that. It's so, so inspiring. And I'm also like, there's a part up here where it says take part. So wh whoever is watching and has like a grandma or a neighbor or anyone who is older, um, please like um, talk to them for a while and take a photo and send that to me. So you can be part of the project and I'm gonna post it and just make it like a, a project of many people who um, share that it's worth talking to all people. Yeah. And this is only sneak peeks. I can show like a little bit of my outcomes. Yeah. Oh. Why does it disappear? Here. No. <laughs> kind of. Okay. Here, here it is. Yeah, so this is really like, I'm because I'm transitioning from doing conceptual self-portraits to doing very documentary yeah. photos of people who are sitting in their living room. It's, it was a hard thing for me, like learning to, because normally I have all the control and now suddenly mm -hmm. I have to give up 90% of the control because mm -hmm. sometimes the only thing I could tell them was like turn a little bit to the light. That was all I could tell, yeah, like they it. couldn't walk anymore, for example. And then that means you have to accept the surroundings that you have and make the best out of that and think about where is the light coming from and accept that this is a documentary project and that you are showing what's really there. But it was hard in the beginning. Like you're like, ah, this is not my normal style. But um, that's exactly what I wanted from the residency. Challenge myself and doing something so different to what I normally do. Yeah. No, this is a great project. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very, very excited and, and super emotionally the, uh, touched with this. And the final outcome, I think be more like a book, a website? Um, there will be a book and there will be an exhibition. Okay. And I'm really, I think as of December, I'm probably starting to think more about that because the residency ends in end of April. April, yeah. And I guess you need some time to make a really great exhibition and a really great book. And of course I want it to be great. Um, but that's also two things that I never really did before. So it's also part of my project to do a good job with those things and find out more about how to make a great exhibition, how to actually display images. Yeah, it will be, it's all a big adventure and it will be another six months of big adventure, I think. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Should we okay. start some editing in the uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. You can share some. Uh, I left my water somewhere. Uh, we can ask. I'd love to have water. It's like right behind me. I just think I can't go because of my microphone. It's right there. <laughs> but you can also not leave, right? No, yeah, that's true. <laughs> But I love will, how we have to. Water for us. Cool, thank you. Um, oh yeah, I can like I just brought some before and after images and show what I. Thank you very much. Mm. Oh yeah, before and after. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this is like the after. Whoa. It's one of my like probably most well-known images, I think. At least it was published a lot. Oh, okay. And this is actually the. It sometimes it hurts to show the before, right? People are like this is what the before was like. Actually, it's encouraging. Yeah, maybe, I guess, because yeah. this is like, it's so old, seriously, like this is like, <laughs> I think it's nine years old, that image, it was like the very beginning when I just started out. 
And um, I guess you can tell I removed the arm later in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. But of course, in the beginning, I was just experimenting with how I do a nice black and white. Um, and um, for that, I would probably like really reduce all the colors. And I would do that man like manually, not just putting it on black and white, but doing every color on its own. So I still have to control over um, darkening down individual tones. And it, like, you know, you know what's funny about editing a life is like, I'm like tempted to look at the comments and be like, everyone's like, you could do this totally quicker and faster another way. Um, <laughs> no, but that's the cool thing. I'm all, like, the good thing is I can also learn from the audience, right? Yeah. But now I can do things like this, like controlling yeah. the, that still. And I like to have that. It's like each color becomes a channel. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that's very important to me because I want to play around and see what do I really want to like feature in the picture? What do I want to rather reduce? See, things like that. It's nice to, that mm. I can control that additionally. And then it's really just playing around. I'm someone who's like, yeah, thank you very much. Um, and then obviously still like doing some more things with the, with the contrast around it. Brightness. Yeah, things like that. I'm trying that. to translate. This oh yeah, I'm doing it in your, I like that. Yeah. And then I edit for that one. I edit like so much of the grain. Oh, this is in German. Is that is that yeah. fine? People will translate it, right? Oh, you I can translate maybe when you play with something. If you said this is the grain. Yeah, this is grain. So I guess that works. And I think I also put a, like a vignette, things like that. And vignette. then, mm -hmm. of course, I would do some things in Photoshop. But here I'd probably also, let's see, definitely brighten up that eye a bit. Yeah. So this is kind of my selection. Things like that. Mm -hmm. It's also so funny, like, I think people are always so scared that people would copy their work, right? And then I've just realized whenever I edit my own work, I realized that I myself can't even, with the same photo, have the same, like, outcome in the end. Which is like so crazy to me. That means like it, you you will never be okay. You can pixel by pixel copy a picture, but in general, isn't it crazy how it's impossible to do the same picture? It's yeah. That like always That's blows my mind. So many details and uh, especially with portraits. Yeah. You know, uh, okay, this was too much. Win, yeah. Because there is so much in the expression, you know, of the eye and like the yeah. mouth and stuff that it's so hard to reproduce. Like you can have the same idea and then. Uh, and maybe the, the hair won't be flowing like this yeah. to create this curve. It's impossible. Mm. And then I'll probably like go crazy um, doing all the things around it darker. And I don't know if people normally like, are you someone who first sets the settings and then does the selection? See, because I think you can do it like, but yeah. I guess it makes sense to rather be like this. Yeah. And then again, it's like, I'm always someone who plays around quite a bit. Okay. Like, I never have like a detailed plan. It's just as what, what I said about the shooting, like, and I'll probably make this less crazy in a minute. Like, let's go not as crazy. And rather give it some more like this. Obviously, this is a quicker edit than I would do that. Yeah, sure. Just do And now I don't even really have to like reduce the iron that much. <laughs> What else can I show? Mm, I mean, this is also another crazy one. Wow. Yeah, see, this is the before and this is the after. Wow. So you can tell, I, I most often just do both. Like, I do some I do some things in Lightroom, so I, like, let's say my first thing is where I'm really looking at what my skin tones are like and changing those. Where I'm so, like, seriously, this is one of my yeah, that's always, a always, yeah. always tools. Like, that's a very looking good at what my skin tones look like, what do okay. I want in them. I always like have like less magenta in my skin tones. Mm -hmm. I'm probably juicing the orange because you can tell how like I made her white oh, yeah, just to tough. have like a crazy contrast. But the nose is still um, has some texture. See? Yeah, because yeah. she has freckles. Mm -hmm. So I guess that. But I love that. Like yeah, it's great. I could never take freckles away. It's awesome. And then you can also already start um, making all the blue tones like very much darker. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there is any purple. Things like that. Like already starting to get your picture in the direction you really wanted to have it. Also like.
things like that. And then I guess you could, I think you could almost like do that whole image in um, in Lightroom if you just like do like I did earlier with the brush yeah. and just make everything around it darker. And that's something new, like the, the adjustment with the brush where you can now, in Lightroom CC, um, play with colors. Mm-hmm, with, always. Yeah. I Before it was somewhere. on the, so that's a new feature introduced uh, two days ago. Before when you were like uh, playing with colors, which is what you're doing, it was only on the global image. Now you can do it with the brush in the new Lightroom CC. Let me check, where would I? I know that I wanted to do that. Yeah, you have one. an eye somewhere. Something like Ooh. that, maybe, because with that image, I would totally like um, check out my green tones, what I want with them. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me check. And then, like, the whole image is supposed to be a little more yellow in my eyes, or let's see. Also, a new feature in Lightroom CC because you have a lot of portraits. Um, uh, now we use Adobe Sensei to automatically detect people's faces. So this is something you could Ooh. use. This is something you can use for you. Yeah, with the self-portrait. It's a portrait. Like, I would say, Laura is everywhere. No, that's, but that, that's <laughs> great because sometimes I'm giving like talks that are like really only about self-portraiture. And then I could just be like, Laura, and then it shows yeah. me all the self-portraits instead yeah. of the other things that I do. And all your shots, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that this thought. Is something you can do now? Like right now? No, you mean like in general we could, right? Because now I have to do this. <laughs> Okay, wait, I wanted to show that like the whole image is going into a more um, like, oh, that was too much, but into a more like greenish, beigeish um, direction. And then maybe I'd say I go um, to, the, to the eyes because they're like, oh, wait, I first should zoom in a bit. Um, the eyes are just so blue. I don't want it to be dark. Um, and I want them to be less blue. Let's see. I want them to match. Whoa. I just selected a little too much. Wait a second. And can we move? Yeah. Here we go. So let's see where it is. Yeah, you want to match good. with the nature? Like not exactly. I don't want to make it too greenish, but I see it was, um, it was all blue. And now it's a little more mm. yellowish greenish. And I like that. I see. So it just matches. Very it doesn't subtle, stick yeah. out. It's, yeah, I'm like, I think I barely ever go like super crazy. We can check like how, how, because I don't want it to be red or something that's like super not natural. That's already oh, too yeah. much. Like it's a little, like I need to be a to little be more much? subtle. Okay. Or just in general, give it a little less. Oh, I was like, why is nothing happening? Oh, I think, oh, because I toned it. It's not like that. Then I just go here and go like less crazy. Mm. Yeah. yeah, like that yeah, maybe. You can and click here so you can show before and after. That, that sounds good. Oh yeah, now it's mo much more. Yeah, you see, it's like yeah. it, it's one, it's more one color palette, and that's something I, I really always look for, like look for because I know it's better. So someone's asking, are all these new features available in Lightroom uh, versions? So CC and Classic. So no, so this is a different set of new features. Uh, now I would say that in the new Lightroom CC, uh, it's catching up also with features from the Lightroom uh, Classic. Mm. Uh, such as uh, playing with color with uh, brush adjustments. So more and more you will see uh, features that, that are uh, added. Uh, and a good question regarding people is a good question. Uh, you can, so we, uh, we uh, publish a new page which is what's new in Creative Cloud, what are all the new features and for each app you can check what's new. Oh, I didn't know. That's and, cool. Uh, yeah, and there is a way to... But yeah, you can check for each app on the uh, on Adobe.com. Uh, Noel like is asking you when you take self portraits, you have a tripod. Yeah, I'm yeah. always having like I normally have like a backpack with my camera, <sighs> maybe two lenses. Nah, most of them is really a 35 because. I think with an 85, and I'm all like for fixed uh, lenses, yeah. but with an 85, you're just so close. That, and I, I kind of got away from taking super facial images. It's more like the whole body and the, the whole scenery in it. Um, and then I have the tripod. And okay. then I have like, when, like when I started out, I had like a super tiny remote control. And in the beginning, I had no remote control. That was crazy. And so then- you would use the timer? I had like, yeah, it was like, Whoa. and the camera, it was like seven seconds and I ran and I took a photo and it was, 
I, I was not really in the frame. It was blurry. Like the so beginnings you, were hard, really. So Kevin is asking, what is your go-to lens? So these days it's more a 35 millimeter. Yeah, yeah, definitely 35. Yeah, really. I mean, 50 is something that I also like to work with. But I'd really say 35 because I'm lately in the last, I don't know, years, I'm just working with so much like landscape yeah. around it that it makes sense. Even for the elders, I guess, like if you want to take the living room and mm -hmm. stuff. You... For that project, I always bring the 35 and the 85 because when I take the close up, yeah, um, for the close then I really, really love the, the 85. That's like, oh, amazing. Like the 85 1.4, wow. like I'm shooting with Sony. Um, that's like, like it blows your mind for the close-up portraits. But naturally, if I want more of the surrounding, then I need the 35. But even there, I'm often going for the 1.4. Okay. I just like that blurriness in the back. I yeah. mean, so many, I'm, the thing is like, so many people who shoot with landscape, obviously you shoot like, I don't know, F sub 11 or something, right? And I even shoot my landscape things normally on 1.4, 1.8, because yes, I like the scenery, but more like in the abstract forms. I don't want it to be super crisp all the way through. That's yeah. not what I'm going for. It's funny to look at myself on the screen and be like, this is how much I, I move my hands when I talk. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> um, I can send some more, some more things that I, okay. like this is the after and this is the before. And you mm. can tell that like, it's really like majorly, it's cutting and removing some things. Oh, okay. Like, um, since it does a good job yeah yeah i'm like not bad yeah actually it was pretty good i yeah. guess i should just should just also remove this little thingy here <laughs> but mm. you will crop so maybe it was part of the crop oh yeah maybe yeah and this one we have to remove the reflection after the water maybe i go like this uh, yeah yeah and then the funny thing is i don't know if i did in the Oh no, it was another picture because sometimes it's funny sometimes because I never move. Forget the exactly. Classic. That works probably. And then. Yeah. Make. Good job, Lightroom. Let's see. Do I want. Nah, oh, yeah. I want it this way rather. To be very. Yeah. Careful yeah, not with for the, the middle. But I mean. If it becomes a pattern, it's bad. But yeah, the just thing is, in a few seconds, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've removed all the things that are kind of annoying me because. I mean, I could have, some of them I could have removed in reality, but sometimes they're really like stuck really like oh, deep yeah, into the ground. Mud. It's a hustle. It creates mud. Yeah. And then sometimes I just forget about it. I'm so much in the mood and I'm just doing my thing and later I'm like, er, wait, this is annoying me. But I think it's important to me that there is nothing really distracting. I mean, I like that big tree stem, okay. but I want it to be like really focused on the object. Yeah. And then what the other thing I did, which I think is pretty important, is that I cut off. And this, like, let's see if I can do that fully here. But I mean, my main thing is that I take some part away that gives the viewer an idea of, I mean, it was closed like in the beginning, right? And now it's open. Mm. The viewer does know that there was, um, uh, that it was another little island yeah, of dirt more. in the back. Yeah. And now it gives the impression of this being like the yeah. entry to maybe a whole ocean or a lake. Um, things like that are like things that I do in editing. And I think I did that one, um, I did with Photoshop additionally because I added some. Do you see it's more, there's more white in the other one. Mm -hmm. But I, I would probably also be happy like that. So it, it just depends on my mood, if I do both or what I do. And then, of course, again, I would go for um, really like pale, skin tones. I okay. just, to me, it's like this old painting feeling, right? Like having people being kind of weirdly pale. <laughs> I don't know, the former artist did that, so I do it too. I don't know what's my, what's my thing with that. And then around that, just having a little more contrast. And the thing is right now, I will probably, I will probably not manage to make the same, like exact same um, tones yeah. as in the other one, just because you can't even replicate your yourself. It's impossible, or like at least and for you me, can it's copy impossible. You can the settings and paste them. But yeah, exactly. I could do that. It's cheating. Also, I like it. Like sometimes it's just, it's interesting that in a different mood, I just create a different picture. Yeah. I like that a lot. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, here for example, that's a good example of. I don't know why I have the after twice. Ah, I guess I have several steps. So this is the final one. 
and you can tell I just was like here there's just so much going on and I was like eh, why a lot of different colors I don't even know why part of the image is blue and part of the image is yellow oh, yeah, right. but then um, I probably just like super quickly removed see my oh yeah because I didn't finish that story nowadays I use my phone as a remote control this is why my oh. phone is there so you were by yourself mm -hmm. I mean there was a team again with the filming but they didn't help me they were just filming <laughs> And I was just in, and seriously, I had fever that day. Oh no. And uh, it was so cold, but it was such a beautiful location. And I was like, I can not, not, like, I cannot not do that. But I think now I have the yeah, color is still on. Um, make this a little brighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. And then I would probably let's see make this way bluer and not yet anything else just so it doesn't oh, really okay. like because it was a yellow blue picture it's like why is the rest why is it so yellow and I will just reduce all the colors like in a minute hmm. things like that And I think you cropped, yeah. Yeah, because I always, um, oh wait, this one, it's not even that bad. Because I'm normally really always cropped to 16 to nine. Okay. It's like my go-to crop. Just because it feels, I don't know, a little bit like a movie. Yeah, totally reducing more of the blues. Right, Maybe not that go. crazy, whoops. It's like you're on a shark hole. Yeah, and I volcano. like that there's not a lot of colors. Something like that. Oh yeah. Almost. It's pretty close actually. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, you can tell that with more time I removed more little spots and like made this probably even more darker. Have like a second round of the brush tool and make, make it darker over here. Things like that. I mean, sometimes, is that a before and after? Yeah, see, sometimes I don't even do a lot. This is the swimming pool. And of course, I like I shot it like that, because that was, that was I think, like, I don't know. Sometimes you're limited in, your, in what you can actually do. And then I definitely cropped it, so you don't see the pool things anymore. Mm. Because of course, I want people to be like, what yeah. is that? What happened here? And then removing the that yeah, part the here. Mm -hmm. Nah, and then. That wasn't the color part. <laughs> <laughs> Things like, like that. Like remove the spot and re it will find another one. <laughs> yeah, uh, true. And then get rid of... Wait. Eh. Oh, that was me being stupid. Things like that. Mm. That was maybe a little too low. So I'd rather remove it up here again. Um, and then debating on if I would remove this, um, oh, that yeah. little thingy here. Probably. And then again, being like, I'm so orange. I don't know why I'm so orange. It's like, I ate too much carrot. And also in general, it's a pretty, um, so colorful. I don't know, it's better. That's nice. Things like that. Um, but you can tell, like, I did oh, yeah. different crop. I enlarged it. Sometimes I enlarge it. Hmm. I even, oh, that's another one. <laughs> I even, this is even like, I think it's too yellow in my, in my, see, I like it better when it's not that yellow. I, I want more contrast on here, but in general, see, like the second time you, you look at it, you just already want to do things differently. Yeah. But that's fine. I mean, your eyes, the eye ball being, you know, yeah. taste. That makes sense. Oh. Who was that? Uh, this was the French Peckle. Huh. Yeah, have like you tried that. Lightroom on the mobile? Or? Oh, I haven't. No? I think I'm so much not, like, I'm not that much doing things on my phone. Oh, let me try it. Cool, I'm Let's, interested in that. Yeah, I will show you because. Okay. Do we see oh, that there? Oh, no, we do the firewatch before, you see? Oh, do we That's have a. a win, yeah. Okay, cool. let's play a short video and then we'll explain what this is. Oh, yeah, I'm curious. Go ahead.
Yay. What is happening? Chat and win. So we are giving away custom stickers. Cool. 100 custom stickers. What's happening? You know what's happening, Laura? Is it like, no, people are people are saying things and then randomly you pick one winner? Yeah. Or how does it work? That's it. Yeah, that's how it works, exactly. And they already know the game. So they just have to uh, be active in the chat. Yeah. And we will randomly pick someone who was active in the chat. And uh, you just saw the logo for partner sticker mule. They, they will get 100 custom stickers. You upload your design on sticker mule and then they create. Oh, and we have the, the winner. Look, wait, want wait, to wait. read the name? Heidi Hartmann. Yeah, congratulations, that very, Heidi. That sounds very, very German, actually. Yeah. Are you from Germany, Heidi? Let us know. Heidi Hartmann, yeah, it's like a... Heidi Hartmann, it's you. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you from? Congratulations, Heidi. We will send oh, yeah, you a message on Behance and uh, you will receive your stickers. I want to know if she's, where she's from. Stickers Mexico. Where is she from? Maybe guess you can... Yeah? Okay, it's coming. Okay. I love how people Heidi. are saying congrats. She's Asian. Ah, okay. Oh, wow. German Asian. That's a thing. Why not? That's cool. Yeah. Thanks, Heidi, for watching. Thanks for being active in the chat. And uh, you will receive your prize. Good job. Ah. So, yeah, I was about to show uh, my iPhone. Oh, yeah. It works. Um, but maybe not. We will see. <laughs> in 20 seconds. So, the, the, the good news is that. Lightroom on uh, mobile, so iOS and Android is free. That's awesome. Yeah, so what? there are some That's features awesome. uh, just for Creative Cloud members, like if you subscribe to uh, the photography plan or the, or the big plan. But most of the features, seriously, are free for everyone. So if you're watching, you can go on the App Store, on the Google Play Market, and download and install um, Lightroom uh, CC. So that's Lightroom. That's super cool. You can take pictures also with Lightroom, and it will take raw pictures. Like row using the like so row pictures. That's it's all the information cool. going to the sensor of the camera of the iPhone in this case. Uh, you see, it's, it's creates like DNG. Mm -hmm. It will directly cool. go. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. So let's take like just a, a crappy picture I took uh, in San Francisco one morning. But it's a cool house. Uh, yeah, it's a very nice house. And there's the chimney, which is like a little bit dramatic here. You know, like oh, what's oh, happening? Yeah, it's a bit crazy. It's a, <laughs> crazy scenery, it's good for Halloween. Um, and you have all the tools at the bottom here. So selective, mm -hmm. you know, but you use your finger. Mm -hmm. uh, healing, if you want to remove uh, something. Okay, let's try with uh, the cable. It's a bit long, but yeah, I will keep That's it because- That's a lot because, of cables. Yeah, actually, I, I like the cable, I will, so I will keep it after, but just to, so we can try. Oh, he actually took the other cable. Of course. Yeah. Like my spot earlier. Yeah, that, that was expected. But then you can uh, remove something. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I like the cables here because it's part of San Francisco. Uh, I can crop. I have picture profiles oh, cool. that are the same in, in my Lightroom. That's and then, awesome. And then you can adjust everything. You even have the, the curve. So I can do like, something mm. like this to create. I like how that's done. Mode. That's like yeah, over it's on the top. It's, yeah, it's good. Huh? And you can play with uh, also like each uh, color. Want to boost the green to something a little bit misty. Uh, contrast, and you see everything is just with a uh, one tap. That's awesome. Exposure. I want to keep it a little bit dark. And it's free. Yeah, it's free. I'm. This is cool. Yeah, even with you, like if you don't have your equipment, you know. Uh, yeah. It's something. Uh, if you spot a location, say, so, "Oh, let me give it a try," and then you will. Uh, I have to do that more. Yeah. Like yeah, I. Sometimes I just don't do it if I have my, don't so have my know, camera. you like, know what you use mm -hmm. all the time? You can yeah. even use it here. Selective color correction. And you can do that and point on one color. Say, find Ooh. this and then uh, boost. So here I'm playing with the hue. I want to play with the saturation. So I'm pointing this. That's and, super cool. And now I'm saturating the, the face of the mm -hmm. house. You see? That is exciting. Okay, what else? So I have some effects, uh, like clarity to uh, dehaze. So there is mist in the morning, so I really want to add more fog or remove some. Yeah, I like the fog. Yeah, I think it's very important too. Uh, vignette, details, so really, you really ha have uh, Everything. a lot of settings. And then you can export it and uh, share it on Instagram or whatsoever, you know? Yeah, pretty awesome. 
that's pretty awesome. And also, if I have internet, so you see it's uh, syncing something in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So now if we switch to my computer. You have it there. I also have Lightroom CC. Oh, and cool. so this is just for our Crayfall members. Yeah, it's a picture I took. Uh, Paco took it, so he's like, uh, uh, I took this picture. <laughs> uh, but now all the settings that I was doing on my yeah, phone, yeah, I can see. they're already there. Well, that is pretty cool. It's so you can edit on the way, and then you can continue editing at home. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or the other way around. Yeah. So that's, that is pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. So I would just boost this, and there are some advanced uh, editing tools uh, too. Like uh, I really like the the geometry, for instance. If uh, yeah, so this could be weird, but let's try with this one and see what type of ge geometry we have. Upright, so we have the auto one, label, vertical or full, and uh, guided, so that's the one I like. So guided, I say that, so that mm. for me, that's a guide, and this one, I want to make sure it's horizontal. And, okay, and now it's fixing, just that, to create yeah. new geometry, or maybe I want to insist on this. Maybe that's the element that I want to straighten. And then of course you lose some parts of the image, yeah. because, but that's fine, yeah, as long as the middle part is great. Yeah, and then maybe now, uh, as you said, I can uh, maybe crop just on this and it becomes a new picture. Yeah. So yeah, more advanced tool, but I wanted to show the, that you can sync everything. Uh, then you awesome. can create albums. Uh, and uh, something we were talking about is uh, your website. Yeah. So I, want, I will create an album that I want to share um, on my website, and I will call it uh, SF. Uh, so in SF, I only have one picture. Maybe I will add another one from San Francisco. Maybe this one is taking some random pictures. OK, I have an album with two pictures. So when you have a Behance account, you have a Behance page? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have your profiles with uh, your portfolio, mm -hmm. what you create, but you can also create your own website, so it's called the Adobe yeah. Portfolio. It can be dynamically connected to your Behance Portfolio. So if you create a new project on Behance, oh, it's automatically it's on your there? website. That's pretty cool. So you only have to do work once. Exactly. Yeah. You update your stuff just once. So this is cool. But what you can also do is create your own pages and manage everything. So now if I go to um, the Adobe Portfolio website, I can create my own page, I can have my own domain name, mm. tweak the templates, change the typeface, the look, so I can really do everything. And now you can have up to, I think, uh, five websites that you can what? manage. Yeah. So awesome. you can have your website and maybe your website just for... Uh, the beauty the, of age. Yeah. Hmm. That's actually very tempting to do that. Ah, you see? Hmm. And what's new, so something that we really like, all the photographers watching, is that you can import now a Lightroom album because everything is in the cloud. That's super it awesome It should too, yeah. tell me that I have SF, yeah. So I click SF, import selected, and it's creating a page for me with the pictures coming from uh, my Lightroom. So cool. And of course, I can add a text, I can add a video, like I am building a page. Basically. Yeah. Okay, so I can say, uh, okay, uh, these are my pictures, and I can change the typeface. I mean, you can add a contact form, embed anything. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a fantastic tool. It's pretty um, exciting. But what I like is also uh, that you can sync what you want on the ends and make sure it's on your website. Yeah, so, it saves you, you a lot of work. Yeah. And I guess we all know that one thing we don't have is time. Yeah, and so. you know, like the number of guests I invite on uh, Adobe Live, like uh, especially graphic designers, and they tell me, oh no, don't check my portfolio, it's not up to date. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'll check true. my website. Everyone says that. And you're like, no, everything should be in sync. Like it doesn't make any sense. So that's yeah. what we're what we're trying to build with uh, the Adobe portfolio. If you are a member of Creative Cloud, you have Adobe Portfolio. It's part of your subscription. So That means I have it for life. Yeah, because you're a resident, you're part of the I forgot to say that. Just a few people who will uh, get Creative Cloud for life. I think that's only the residents yeah, in the world. I think I so. Yeah. And when the day they told us that, we were like, are you serious? Are you making fun of us? <laughs> that was like a very, very, very fantastic moment. We found out about that. So we, we have like five minutes together. I just want to make sure they can follow you. So if you can share My how to follow you. Yeah, so your Behance, Laura Zelenga. Yeah. Okay, make so sure to follow Laura on Behance. 
I mean, there's like where I show like behind the scenes of things or out like outtakes or other projects that I do. Like for Adobe, I've been to Cannes. I did a project about diversity. Um, or I'm showing more than because on my Instagram, for example, I'm only sharing like one image out of all this series that I do. Let me check if I find the one that I just did the behind the scenes for. Um, wait. So that one, it's here, the okay. glitter one. And then on Behance, I shared like ah, way more, details more about like the project. yeah, what I did and like different images from the because there's also a different version where the oh, where the shadow is very different. And then there's different like versions where there's a whole hand as a shadow in it. And I normally don't really share outtakes. And I also say this is the before picture, I like yeah. the old picture because it's a project that I'm doing where I'm recreating old images like 10 years ago and I'm oh. recreating them. Like oh, I love more idea. like reinterpreting yeah. them. Interpreting? What? I don't yeah, care. I'm, English is not my thing. <laughs> yeah, and then... Um, then on Instagram, Lara Zalenga, yeah, one word. Like it's one word and all okay. small and together in a red because I have several Instagrams. I don't know why. And your residency project, exactly. Beauty of age. Yeah, and for that one, I really love if people would like contribute in this program. That makes me very happy because <laughs> I mean, my ultimate goal is that more young people interact with old people and that we all together like spread the word that age is something very beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's almost time, so I think that uh, the team, and I haven't watched it, so I will discover it with you. Uh, we had an amazing time uh, at Adobe Max, you know, yeah. with all our friends and all these people around us. We, we had amazing guests. I think it's uh, my favorite Max so far in terms of Adobe Live uh, yeah. content. It was really Really awesome. cool people on here. Really cool people. And I think they've prepared a, a video, a recap of the Ooh. three days. So we will discover the video all together. I never watch it, so let's see that. <laughs> Wow, that was cool. Yeah, and so it gives you an overview of the community pavilion, what's yeah. happening uh, at Max. It was super fun. Good and, memories. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, thanks to all the team, it was a lot of fun to uh, put a studio also. Look at this beautiful studio live from the Adobe Max conference. Thanks everyone for watching. Yeah. Thanks, Laura, for coming and sharing your process. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was it's always uh, fun. Always a pleasure, and I'm really looking forward. We should do it at the end also of the. Yeah, BTFH see what project. really comes out. Yeah. And uh, maybe we can give away the book. At the end. Yeah, that no, seriously. Awesome. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. Okay, thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. We will be back next week live from San Francisco with UX designers because we made Ooh. big announcements about Adobe XD. Now there is auto animate, voice comments. So we will build prototypes uh, with them uh, next week starting on Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Laura. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>